Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time we're going to be going over shear and thermal strain. If you don't remember what strain is, go ahead and watch the last few videos. But strain is that normalized deformation. So when we pull on something, it gets longer and there is some sort of deformation. And we normalize that based on how long it was originally. Because obviously, if something is twice as long as it was before, that's a big stretch. While something is only you know one percent as long as it or longer than it was before, not as big a stretch. But just from our deformation, we don't get that. Deformation might be equal to five feet, but if the original length was five miles, well, that's not quite so surprising. However, if the deformation is five feet and the original length was one foot, oh my goodness, this is an incredibly elastic material. So that's why we had to normalize it, that's where strain came from. Now, just like there are normal stresses and shear stresses, well, guess what? There are normal strains and shear strains, and also thermal strains. So after this, we're going to be able to calculate the shear and thermal strain. We're going to focus on shear to begin with. Okay, but why do you care? Well, you've probably been in a parking lot before, and if so, you've probably seen these cracks along the ground. Now. What causes these cracks? And what are some ways to prevent those cracks? Think about that for a minute. Well, honestly, what's causing most of these cracks is that the ground is always contracting and then expanding again. Contracting and expanding because of changes in heat. So these are all signs of thermal strain. Shear strain is harder to see visually, just to give you a good visual example. But I will show you an example later on when we actually start doing problems. So let's go to shear strain. Now, normal strain is all about stretch. And you're like, well, how does shear strain work? It's a bit harder. Um, so the best way to think about it this way is that shear strain comes from the change in the shape of the cross section. So normal strain kind of goes from this and then it gets longer. It's now a longer rectangle or a shorter rectangle, whatever. This one, it's more that you have angled that rectangle. It was, you know, a perfect square, and now it is a rhombus. And if you're looking for our deformation, it's right here. How much has that corner moved when we applied this load over how long it was originally? So, like I said, this will cause a change in the angle between initially perpendicular planes. Now, just like with um, strain, normal strain, we measure it in, you know, strains, which isn't a real thing. It's just a word to make it easier to talk about. Um, and for shear strain, since it's all about that angle, we measure it in radians, which once again, doesn't actually matter. It's not, radians isn't really a, an angle, or isn't really a unit so much as it is just a way of talking about things. If you see an equation that has radians in it, it will disappear, radians will disappear once you use it in the equation. Now, you might notice here that you see that this deformation and the angle right here, well, this right here, that's a symbol for shear strain. And as long as this deformation is small, very, very small, we can actually make a very easy thing. We can just say, okay, well, tan of this angle, which is what we would normally use to um, calculate the shear strain, is gonna be equal to the shear strain. Because remember, tan of an angle, tan of theta, that's equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? Opposite over adjacent. And just like with normal strain, normal strain was equal to, you know, the deformation over length. Well, in this case, the opposite of this angle right here would be equal to this delta over L. And so I can measure both, I could calculate it. But we're just going to say since our strain is normally, I'm going to say normally small, we can make this small angle approximation. If the strain is not small, you can't do that. Okay? If the strain is not small, you can't normally do that. So just remember this is only for small strains, which will be the case in most situations for us. Okay, now how about some sign conventions? You're like, oh yes, I've been waiting for the sign convention so much. Good for you. Okay. So how do we determine if a shear strain is positive or negative? Well, 
There's no real reason why it has to be one way or another, but you have to have rules in order to avoid terrible engineering disasters. So if the angle, which is shown in pink, increases, the shear strain is negative. And if the angle decreases, the shear strain is positive. And as a note right here, this should be like, oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the correct way. Um, almost, let's mess up. Shear strain is negative. So if you look right here, pi over two minus a negative angle, negative theta, well, that would become a plus sign right there. So we get more than one or more than 90. And so that's why if you look right here, you see the exact same thing. And this is where it comes from. Okay, this is where the um, convention comes from. It just says that if we have a negative angle, well, obviously that's 90 plus something because 90 minus a negative is plus. If it's a positive angle, well, it's 90 minus a value. So it'll be less than 90. Okay, so I believe, yes, we'll do that next time. I believe we're stopping here. And next time we're going to jump into thermal strains. Those reasons that you see all those cracks in sidewalks and roads. Why potholes exist and why they're so terrible in Michigan. So, thanks for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.